Hello everybody and welcome back. Yesterday you saw me crack open this pre-release pack, show you what's inside and then walk through the basics of building a sealed deck and the archetypes. But today we're actually going to take these materials. I'm going to show you how I build a sealed deck from start to finish. So first things first, I'm gonna clear off all this stuff. We don't need this anymore. All we need is here's our pre-release card, which we can play in our deck. So Pillage the Bog is a card we could put in our deck if we wanted to. And these six play boosters of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So let's get started. I'm going to tell you everything that I'm thinking about right here. Okay, first things first, I like to crack open all the packs. Now, some people think that I'm a monster for this, but I like to crack open all the packs at once. The reason why is that your local game store is really helpful for the... I'm going to move this over somewhere. It's not so glary. It's really helpful for your um, store owner to be able to just come around and pick up all the trash from the packs right away. So I know you want the thrill of going back to the rares right away. I totally understand. But uh, even if you just stack them up like this, you can still go through and still get that thrill. It just helps speed up the process a little bit for everybody so they don't have to linger around and clean trash the whole time. I know it's a controversial take, but uh, it'll help out your game store, trust me. Okay, now that all those packs are opened up, we've got all these cards, pulled out some of the tokens, don't need those. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go through this stack and start sorting it by color. So I'm gonna sort out by color and put the multicolored cards in a stack too. This will kind of show us what we have access to. And so the way I do it, maybe I'm wild. Ooh, Mind Slaver, exciting. The way I do it, maybe people think this is kind of wild, is I chase reawaken. Sorry, I'm just getting excited by all these rares. I'm doing my own look of the rares right now here too. It's just about Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh, baby. If you open it up in a pre-release pack or an e-boost pack, you can put it in your deck. So Stoneforge is on the table. That is a sick pre-release open. Love that. Um, wow, I got, I got a little distracted right there. Um, what I was trying to say is you, um, is I like going through one color at a time and just pulling them all out to put them in a stack all together. Um, <clears throat> I find that for me, whoa, booster fun, Jace, we've got two Jace reawakens, might be playing blue here, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but, um, you know, it's wild that I work on this game all day and think about it all day, and yet I still get excited about my opens and pre-release, it just always feels so cool. So anyway, I go through one color at a time and pull them all out, as I was saying, I go through one color at a time and pull them all out, um, I just find that for me that's the fastest way to do it, I don't have to, like have my hands moving all around to sort them between a bunch of different piles. Um, I can just go through one color at a time and create piles. Not the fastest for everybody, it's how I do it. I believe it's faster, but uh, it's probably faster for me because I've done it for so many years. I can't speak to how it is for everybody else. So if you want to run the experiment on your own, you can give it a try and, and, and you know let me know. Try it both ways. Someone run a timer. Post about it in the comments. I will read your comment about it. So you tell me, everyone at the pre-release time yourself on it. Okay, so I'm pulling all these out. I guess I also normally when I'm going through, I pull out the lands and the um, the art cards. Those all just go in a stack. You're not gonna put any of those in your deck. So um, right, the basic lands, I guess you will put in your deck, but you can add as many basic lands as you want. So from the store, so you don't have to worry about anything there. But if it's a thing that's eligible, that's not a basic land to go in your deck, um, I want it in these stacks. <clears throat> okay. So why am I separating them out? So by separating them out by color, what's going to help me do is just kind of get an idea of, um, well, A, how deep every color is, how many cards of that color are there, but it's also going to just give me an idea of, um, in a moment here, when I go through the colors one by one, I can evaluate them on a color by color basis. Okay, so I can see them all together, see what cards might they might synergize with, and so on and so forth. Got to put these in, in Wooburg order, white, blue, black, red, green, that's critical. I did that once wrong in a previous video and no one would ever let me live it down. Um, so it kind of separate them by color. And then what we're gonna do after we separate them by color is we're gonna look through each stack and kind of see what we like, what we're seeing as strong, and what our strongest cards are and what draws us in. Now things that we're gonna look for, as I mentioned in my video yesterday, are bombs. So these are like really strong cards that you're just gonna be excited to play with. Removal spells, of course, things that blow up your opponent's creatures. Uh, we're going to be looking for, of course, evasion, and then just, you know, just a good curve. And I'll get to the curve part in a little bit. Don't sweat it too much. I'll pull out all these gold cards over here to the side. I guess I can live with this pillage the bog. Pull out these artifacts, put them over here. I do love Mind Slaver, although I don't know that's going to be making my limited deck. It is a sweet card, though. All these guys can go over here. This is a red card I just missed before, and these go there. Okay, so now let's go through these colors one by one. Let's kind of see what, what we've got. 
<clears throat> and so the first thing I like doing is I like going through them one by one and evaluating what I think the strongest cards are because that isn't necessarily a pull, but or isn't necessarily the reason why you should pick a color, but it is a strong pull there. This is a decent tapper. It's a nice card to play, but not going to pull me into the color. Combat trick I'll play if I'm in the color. That's nice. Now, this is a solid removal spell. Journey to Nowhere is two mana, essentially kill a creature, so that's a great one to have lying around. This is another removal spell. It's basically Banishing Light with Upside um, on it. You can um, pay two more to cast on your opponent's turn. High Noon, this is a, a kind of neat neat card, um, just like a neat design, but probably it's not a great limited card. If you're white-red, maybe you could consider it, right? You can hit anything for five, including your opponent, but the other ability isn't that impactful um, in limited, unless your opponent's playing a very certain like second spell archetype, in that, that case, this will get him. You can play a lot of medic if you want to. Um, it, it's like a filler card, I would say. Stone Forge, of course, is an incredibly powerful magic card if you have equipment, which, hold on, equipment check. Going to see, did we get any colorless equipment? Nope, we totally whiffed on colorless equipment. So, um, so much for that. But it's a good dream. Sheriff of Safe Passage, a fine card. Help, you know, if you're going wide with a lot of creatures, you can uh, put this out. It's okay. Another filler card, it's Outlaw Medic. It's kind of cycles through. I like this card fine. It can get flying eventually. Uh, because of the plot mechanic, you can kind of set a card aside and then. Um, play it later on, so this is you can do take a turn off doing that, and then this will get a fly encounter. This is a really nice card. It puts a counter on your whole team, as well as kills off an artifact and an enchantment if you want it to, so you can kill off their stuff, oh, which is really nice. Um, and this Griffin is okay, format three two flyer. White looks all right. It's got Journey Nowhere Mystical Tether, which I really like. These are two solid removal spells. Stoneforge we can't use, which is a real heartbreaker. So it's got two solid removal spells. It's got some okay creatures. And we're going to be looking for about 23 cards we want, we want to play ultimately. So not everything we see here is going to get played, but if we go down that, that color route, but just knowing what some of the strong cards are will help us. Uh, this is a decent card. It's, it's a combat trick you can use. Not, not, not then too, too wild, but it's nice. I like this card, especially in the second spell decks. So that's that's exciting. Um, just a little cantrip. Uh, cantrip meaning a spell that draws you a card when you cast it. All right, I mean, we have Jace. Now, Jace is... Nice. Um, you know, this format can be a little bit on the fast side sometimes, from my experience. Um, but even then, a two-mana Planeswalker is something you have to be pretty excited about. You can cast it on turn four. Um, looters, drawing cards, and discarding cards is very strong and limited. And if your opponent can't kill this right away, you're going to be in great shape. It also lets you just <clears throat> set up cards to be cast, you know, for free later on with this plot ability. So it's a very exciting card. And the fact we have two of them is, I mean, it makes you really want to play it. This, I, I like the Scroll Thief variant a lot, actually. It's one that uh, can't be blocked if you've committed a crime. just helps you keep drawing cards. This card is all right if you're doing the Don't Cast Spells deck, because uh, you can skip playing and then draw off it. This card is kind of mediocre. You'll play it sometimes, but you don't love it. Here's a, a Quench, a, a small counter spell that makes a token. Bounce Spell lets you surveil if you have a desert. Cool. A second Jace. I like this Drake Fine, 3 mana 2 3 flyer is nice. And then a removal spell. Okay, well, in blue, you've got one removal spell that's weaker than the white removal spells. It's honestly not that deep, but it does have two Jaces. So, um, definitely something I'll be coming back to. Let's take a look at what we got in black. Okay, so <clears throat> I like Vadmir a decent amount. Whenever you commit a crime, he gets a counter. It's um, not that hard to commit a crime. Any removal spell will do it. There's lots of other ways in the set to do it. So,. This is a, a nice, it's not like a bomb rare, but it's, it's pretty nice. I mean, when you get up to four counters, which is not that hard, it gets Menace and Lifelink, so it's pretty good. A little combat trick you can play if you want to. Not crazy about it necessarily, but sometimes. Another fine card, if you're playing Outlaws, you can play this Boneyard Desecrator if you want to. This card is totally okay, fill it filler kind of card. I find that in play boosters, I play the five drop commons less, because I'll have strong uncommons and rares, so um, often those cards don't super make it. This card, another okay card, this, what we call the Euthanist ability in design, based on, of all things, a card from, like, Ravnica 20 years ago, called Orzhov Euthanist, I guess it wasn't Guild Pact, technically, but anyway, this is a fine card, it comes into play, it can euthanize a creature, it's got flying lifelink, yeah, it's, it's totally solid. This is great, this is a removal spell that kills a non-outlaw, now there all are a ton of outlaws in this set, so this is restrictive, but you'll still find a target for it. Shrink your stuff, that's okay. Another one of the Euthanists. Wow, two Vadmirs. I missed that when I was going through before. That's something. If you, I mean, it's pretty good if we have ways to commit crimes. So many rooftop assassins. Um, this card's nice. Can give you treasure tokens. 
Here's this rakish crew. Once you get good with outlaws, right? So whenever outlaw dies, you drain them for one. So like a um, blood artist or bastion remembrance kind of card. Here's this gigapede, which is a little expensive. It doesn't make my deck that often, but can make it sometimes. This card, which I don't, I don't love, but you can play sometimes as well. And then this. So interesting black. It's got these two Vadmirs, which definitely point you in a direction. It's got this Rakish Crew, which will point you in a direction. Rakish Crew? Rakish Crew, maybe. It'll point you in a direction um, with, uh, you know, Outlaws. It only has one removal spell, and like I said, this card can be pretty situational in this in this set. Uh, it's, it's a lot less good than it looks, because so many of these are these types. So I'm not going wild about black, but I could be convinced to play it. Let's take a look at red. Here's a removal spell. It's a little expensive, but I'd probably still play it, right? It's X, R, R, the deal X damage, and you can hit their face, which lets you kill them in a long game, so... It's still a card I'll play. This is, this is a pretty good card. This card just a fine creature. It's 4 mana, 4, 3 is pretty average stats. Pulverizer, a 5 mana kind of curve topper. Once again, I play the common or uncommons with 5 drops, 5 mana less. I usually just play a couple of them. Uh, <clears throat> Thunder Salvo. That's a solid card, though. 2 mana deal, 2 damage. Nice removal spell. I like this Wolverine a decent amount. Um, you can... I just like plotting on turn three to draw the card when I play it out later. Then one of these pulverizers, this prickly pair. This card's pretty good. Three mana, two two that comes with a one one. I like that. Here's calamity. This card is a pretty exciting um, curve topper. Six mana, four six haste. Okay, that's fine. But uh, if you can saddle it right away, which often you can, you can create a, a token copy of the thing that saddled it that attacks alongside with it. So let's just get in with it, and you get to do that twice. So you get two of those tokens attacking with it, which is really cool. I like this Cursor as well. It's you just, you know, draw a card, always into bottling, as you saw with the card earlier. This Rotary Power Mancer is okay. Outlaw's Fury is okay. Yeah, you know, once again, nothing is really getting me super stoked. Electric Dominance I like as an expert in spell. Here's here's a deal, too. Calamity is a, a nice card. It, it's good, don't get me wrong. You get to, like, saddle it right away and make two creatures attacking with it. If they have the ETBs, it goes kind of wild. But I don't know if it's a bomb. It's, it's a strong card. Strong card for sure. All right, uh, Rise of Varmints is great if you're playing a graveyard strategy. You may get a two in for every creature in your graveyard, so we'll see how much graveyard stuff comes up here. This is a, a, a bite spell, so this is a nice removal spell in green. I like this Beaver a lot, four mana, four four Vidge um, that you can saddle up to, you know, pump up your creatures. But just four mana, four 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 Vidge is pretty interesting, pretty exciting enough. Like this one a lot too, five mana, five four Trample that ETBs and gains three life is a decent rate. And you can plot it on turn four to play it for free on turn five and double spell there. That's pretty good. Um, I like this card a lot, too. Uh, I like playing one of these in my decks, usually. Right, can go to land with this or make a big creature in the late game with Dance of the Tumbleweeds. This card is decent as well. If you have deserts, right, it comes into play, draws you a, a desert, and then gets bigger. Another one that's fine with Paladin. This Grizzly is okay. Usually I like the th I'd rather have a three three than a, than a four two a lot of the time. Just that third toughness is so relevant. One general thing is you don't want to trade your creatures down. So like if I play a three mana four two, uh, a common stat line for two mana is two power. So it's very easy to trade off your three mana card with their two mana card, but a lot harder to trade off your three three uh, if it's a three three right because usually uh a two power with a two drop not three power. Something to think about. Little little trick helps prevent a uh, removal spell. Little, leaves a counter behind. This card's great, the Cactarantula, 5 mana 5, si uh, five mana 6, 5, if you have a desert, which is pretty easy to do. And then get two lands or deserts, eh, I might not play it, but maybe, maybe not. There's some decent green cards here, we got got the fight spell, got some creatures. So no, none of these colors are like, screaming my name. Some of them are, some of, you know, there's kind of a lot of different synergies happening here, but I want to check my, the gold card, see if any points pulls me in a direction. These are often great for pointing you in a direction, so let's see what we find. This is a green-blue uh, fight spell, so that's pretty nice. It can fight or have you uh, counter non-creature, so that's good to have around. This is a black-green. This card is quite strong, black-green. It reanimates something and then has it fight something, so that's really nice. Here's Jolene, which gives you treasure when you attack with her and lets you ping with the treasure. So if we go red-green, that's a good combo. Bruce Tarl is quite strong. It's a... 4 mana 4 3 that makes 2 2 double strikers because they're oxes. Oxen, I suppose. And then, um, or it just lets you uh, bottle your top card. This card is pretty decent, and if you're doing the outlaw thing, you're committing a crime, you make a mercenary token. It gives your outlaws first strike. That's nice. 
This card is, is not that strong. Y it's fine to play, but I'm not super stoked about Humiliate. If you go green-white, you'll play this card. It's a you know decent side post in common. Giving, uh, getting bigger for your mounts. Green-white is, green is all about mounts. This is good. Just two mana, deal two damage. And uh, you get to cantrip, draw a card if you play another spell, which is pretty easy to do in blue and red. A second Bruce Tarl. So once again, a strong card that we, that we then have two of in our deck. We really got another Humiliate, and we've got our Prelude's card, Pillage the Bog. So, <clears throat> kind of seeing that, you know, our um, our stuff, I guess we'll also take a look at our artifacts to see if they're any good here. This card, you probably won't play that often. It's just a, a pretty slow removal spell. Here's a couple of Curve Filler, as in the Sterling Hounds. Mind Slaver, I, I love, but uh, just it costs so much mana to be before you can do anything. If you're a slow deck, you can, can consider it, but I do think the format's a little on the faster side. Bandits Hall is okay if you're committing crimes. And then just for our lands, we've got um, two of these pinging deserts, the deal of damage and come into play tapped, to fix your mana a little bit. And then these guys, uh, which I actually like quite a bit, these um, are bounce lands. And these lands are very deceiving. What these do is when they come into play, you, you return a land to your hand and it taps for two mana. Now, this might not seem very good, but these lands are actually excellent. And the reason why is they basically kind of draw you a card when you play one. Um, if you if you have a, a hand with this and one other land, you can probably keep it because that's the equivalent of having three lands in play. Um, so it really helps you you know, just smooth your draws, make sure you don't get messed up with your mana. So this card is quite strong. And here's just a land that uh, kind of lets you um, scry and fixes for mounts. So kind of what I'm seeing here is we can go in a couple different directions. I, I'm really tempted by it to actually let our rares pull us here because our colors do look so equal to me. I feel like we could play both of our Bruce Tarls, which looks pretty strong, right? We could play both of our Bruce Tarls. We get <clears throat> a remo some removal spells and like the Thunder Salvo and the Electro Dominance and this Journey to Nowhere and this Mystical Tether. The white creatures looked decent, you know? So that's one option. Another option I like is I felt like green was one of our better colors overall, just like with the quality of creatures it had lying around. And so we could go blue-green. I'm tempted so that way we could play both the Jaces, which is really nice. And we can also play this uh, Decisive Denial, which is um, just a good good removal spell. Um, those are kind of the two places I'm looking. I could also consider blue-red, I guess. Like, you get the... the you can play a kind of control -y game, right? You get Calamity, you get both your Jaces, you get a some removal spells and this Thunder Salvo and this Slick Sequence. Um, in in black, I'm just not as crazy about the black. I do like both these Vad mirrors, which is nice, but um, a lot of the rest of it is like, yeah, just not not the strongest. A lot of like fillery cards. I guess I do like these two removal spells in white. You get the Safe Keeper. You get this Sheriff of Safe Passage. You get this Wingsmith. This Griffin. I don't know. I don't know that I should play that I should build this two J stack, but how often do you get to build a sealed deck that has two planeswalkers? You know, like that's just such such a wild thing. This color is not that deep, but what I will say is um, you don't you don't have to be that deep, right? You're only going to play twenty three cards, so you can get around it sometimes. I'm really tempted to build this J stack. You know what? I, 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 I or I could build this Ox deck. You don't get to build an Ox deck every day either. I don't know. You let me know in the comments below which of the two decks you think you would build if you would go for Jaces or, or Oxen. Um, I guess I'm going to... I'll try building both and see which which I like more here. So I'm going to set my black off to this side. I'm going to try... Do I want to build... Let's try building the Ox deck first, okay? And then we'll see how it looks. Now, why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I trying to build two decks and laying out seeing how it looks? Well, I want to see... How, how my mana curve looks. And what the idea of a mana curve is that you get to see at all points of the game what um, what spells you have. So you kind of see, oh, do I have enough stuff to do early? Do I have enough stuff to do late, you know? Um, uh, poor Stoneforge Mystic. Can't can't play you. I'm going to put you over here in the no-go zone. Um, now, you might be noticing I'm laying out my cards with the creatures up here and the spells down here. That's so that, that a mana curve really only applies to your, um, to, or it mostly applies to your creatures. You want to know like, what turn you can play each of, each of your creatures on. Um, because if, 
I have Journey to Nowhere up here. I'm not actually playing Journey to Nowhere on turn two, so I want to be able to like, um, to know that hey, I'm not actually playing Journey to Nowhere on the second turn. It shouldn't really count as a as a two drop. So that should be down here. Okay, so already laying out my white. I I I think I'm pretty close to off it. Right. The only really good cards I have are these two removal spells. The rest of it is all pretty pretty weak. I, I do have the Bruce Tarles, but it's hard to imagine that. It's worth playing white just for that because the rest is so weak. Like these are filler cards. This is only okay. The rest is, is, is not that strong. So, I mean, I, I can finish laying it out, but I'm going to be pretty uninspired by this. I can almost, almost be sure. And yes, I can play the two Bruce Tarles. Um, but yeah, this is really, really not going to get there, I think. I don't even like love playing these guys. Yeah, if I take the two Bruces from over here and put them in my four drop spot, I just have like some weak two drops and yeah, th this is this is not where I want to be. Okay, so let's say we don't go down the white path. I will consider there is a world where I could sp you could splash or you nowhere in Mystical Tether. We do have that um, red white land, right? So our lands are red white and blue red. So if I wanted to splash white, I could play the braided bluffs and see if I can make it happen. But let's, let's just take the rest of these white cards and I'll set them aside for now and I'll come back to the idea of a splash later. Let's look at blue-red next, which I was kind of interested in. So blue-red, you get to play the Jaces, which I was excited about. Um, because, you know, once again, how often do you get to play a bunch of Jaces and Limited, right? <clears throat> so let's, let's sort these out. I'm, I'm going to put Jace at the four-drop spot in my curve. I know he's not a four-mana card, but... I think I'm going to play him on turn four a lot of the time. So it gives me a good idea of what I can play when. Um, so, all right. I'm seeing a problem, and I wonder if you see it too. The problem is I have, like, no two drops. Um, I've got this Canyon Crab, the end. That is troubling. Right? And once again, when I look at my blue, like, I'll play this Stop Cold probably. Oh, this goes over here. I'll play this stop cold, and you know, I'll play this slick sequence, which is nice, but I really run out of, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of blue, good blue going on here, which is, it's tough, it's really not that deep. All right, let me try, let me try laying out a different deck. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my blue for a second, I'm going to move my red away, I'm going to try laying out blue-green, which was also potentially interesting to me. And let's see what we can do there. So blue-green has some solid removal spells. Let's see how it helps my curve out. And these are five drops. You can plot them on um, you can plot them on turn four, but I'm going to treat them as fives. Like maybe I can play this Grizzly. I can, maybe I can play this Cactus Ranch. It might be a five or a six. It might be a five in my deck. Man, I mean, I have this dance, the Tumbleweeds, it costs three mana. And so once again, I just really don't have a lot to do in the two mana slot. The dearth of, of two drops is really a challenge. I can play this Denial card. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, he said apologizing to the internet. Um, man, that, this is a toughie. Not a lot of two drops. This whole pool is just kind of low on two drops, frankly. Um, I could, so maybe we just have to bite the bullet on that one. I just, I really hate not having a lot to do early, especially knowing, me knowing that this format can end up a little bit faster. Um, my blue, man, it, it's really hard to not play both these Jaces, but my blue just does not look very strong. All right, let me try moving this blue out of the way here. Set this blue over to the side for a second. And maybe, well, if I go green-red, I already kind of know I'm going to be short on two drops because red-blue didn't have it. All right, let me look at black one more time. Now, green-black, I did get some gold cards for. I did get um, some removal spells for. So this is why I was trying building out a few different decks because, you know, maybe I end up seeing something and I'm like, oh, actually, I discounted black earlier, but I may want to come back to it. So I get both these Vadmirs. I get to shoot the sheriff as like a removal spell. It can kill some stuff, kill off your opponent's mounts or what have you. I play some of these rooftop assassins. I get this treasure dredger as a as a decent two drop. I get this rakish air. Maybe this is getting somewhere. 
You play black green. I don't think I no, I'd necessarily play this guy. I don't know how many of these rooftop assassins I would want to play. Mm. A lot of my best cards here are outlaw cards, which make me wonder. Does make you wonder about black red? I'm just trying them all out. It's really going through the the cycle here. I do have both these cards in black green. If I were to go black green, man, I think I'm just. This is just. It's got. This is a pool that's got some strong cards. I would play this too. This is a graveyard card. I put in this deck. I put this card in this deck. Um. You know, this is a. <clears throat> this is a pool that might might take a little bit of finesse. To, to get there. I think this is probably like a, I'd probably choose this as like a six mana card because I, I want to I want to play it with the second mode at least. I guess that's a five that I would ideally like to play as a six. This is a, a card that I'm gonna plot and play much later. This is here. This is maybe getting somewhere, but it doesn't look super cohesive. It's playing a lot of cards. It's playing like these three rooftop assassins I'm not that stoked about. I could like, <clears throat> I can play this, this murder surprise for a graveyard card. Okay, let me try laying out black red. Really going through the circle on this one. All right, so the black red deck would be all about outlaws. So we would get this at knife points. And this is a tough one. If you think you know what you would build, you drop that thought in the comments. And maybe this gives us a nice curve. Right, you do, I don't think I want to play all these cards necessarily, but you do it like this. And maybe you can play this Pulverizer here. You get this Outlaw's Fury if you want to as an Outlaw Matters card. Hmm. Still looking at these two Bruce Tarls and these two removal spells too. I wonder if there's a way we can work work something out here, because I do this abraded bluffs. This looks like Bruce Tarl and these removal spells are so strong, but the rest of white is not. So how, how's this looking? So I get the three black two drops. I get these two removal spells. I get electric dominance, which is nice. The curve on this deck looks way better, which is great. Um, My card quality is a little on the lower side. Okay. Um, let me think about white one more time. Like, now that I know how light on two drops I am, I'm just thinking back to the fact that white has this I can plot on the second turn. And it has these outlaw medics, which at least gum up the grounds and cycle away. And this keeper. Now I'm thinking about white, black, and splash red as one option. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look and just yeah, this is the the really the this deck just keeps on keeps on moving around here. All right, so this would give me I could even get choices in my two drops, which what a luxury. This I'll probably plot on turn two a lot of the time. Play this poor, poor Stone Forge Mystic. Nothing there for you. Uh, I would play this for sure. I might play this combat trick. And then I would. I would consider. Right, so now I'm playing like this token sack deck. Maybe I play this Desecrator, maybe I play this Combat Trick. I could play of these two Humiliates that are okay, I could, that are kind of like two drops as well. You could look at their hand and make them discard a, uh, and make them discard a, a card and then put a counter on a creature you control. It's also a crime, so it would trigger Vadmir. I was really not where I thought I would be ending up here. But this is the most functional deck I feel like I've seen so far. Um, okay, this is kind of interesting. This is maybe getting somewhere. And then if you can splash the red, right, you can play 
both of those Bruce Charles. Hmm. That is pretty darn tempting. Bruce Tarl, where'd you go? You're in this deck? Oh, you're at the end of this deck. Sometimes you just have all these cards and they go places, you know? Right, so if I could find a way to splash my white cards in this, I could play both, or sorry, splash my red cards. Right, I could play these two. I could splash the Bruce Tarls, and maybe that's cooking. Maybe that is getting somewhere. Right, sorry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play this anymore. If I was to go black, white, and splash red, how many crimes do I have for Vadmir? So Vadmir is a card that's really strong if I can turn it on. How many crimes? So this is a repeated crime, which is a big deal. Um, this is a crime if you can hit it, which you can't always do. And I've got... Four, five, six crimes. These count as crimes as well. This abraded bluffs. I can play an off color one. It's pretty strong with Vadmir if I can get it rolling. I think this might be the direction I end up going. I think the question for me is do I want to go black, red, splash, whites, or black, White splash red. Um, right, so basically the curve in white is a little better because I, I get to play this key keeper. I get these two humiliates also, which can kind of fill in the spots on the curve. Hmm. Man, it feels, I, every time I go past these two Jaces, I'm like, am I really not playing these two Jaces? But I might play this Eroded Canyon as well. Um, even though it's mostly off color, just the extra crime might be uh, might be worth it. Right, and if I play the red, my curve is worse, but I get to play, I get Electro Dominance and Calamity as the big upgrades. I also get like an extra removal spell, but white. I think I, I know this is weird, given I was excited about green at the outset, but I think I like this. I mean, there's is there a green-white deck, maybe? There's, like, these cards, plus I get to play this green-white gold card, green-white splash red. Okay, I guess I can try one more, and if that one doesn't pan out, I'm going to come back to this build, because I think it's pretty close. Set the black aside for a second. Oh, you're getting the full meal deal today. You are seeing me try out all these, all these guys. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna set the black aside for a second. I'm gonna try this green, white, splash, red deck and see how it looks. So I'll just play this Congregation Griff Green white's about saddles, so I'd probably play this grizzly. I have enough deserts to consider playing this. Here's this a good four drop. Um, I think I would probably play this cactarantula. Play these spinewood paladins. And I'll play throw from the saddle for sure. Would I play Jolene? Green, white, I don't think I would splash for this. And I've got these hounds as curve fillers if I need them, but I hope I don't. Um, and then red, I don't think I have splash. I think, so with the splash, normally I try and keep as few cards as possible just because you're gonna have to like splash some lands and you don't wanna draw them when you can't cast them. Like maybe I play this Thunder Salvo, but I don't feel super strong about it. Okay, so if we were to go down this path, you have these four two drops. You have these three drops. Yeah, the the upside is you get these big burly creatures at the top end, which is nice. But I think compared to the black that I get access to, 
and the fact that like a it helps my two drops and b i have both these vad mirrors which if they grow high enough like will be pretty scary i don't know it's it's close um in my consideration but i think i like the white black deck a tad more like these humiliates might be might be good too all right i think i'm going to try this white black deck so white black splash red all right so let's let's finish this guy up so i want to play these and I, i'll i can consider putting that at three now knowing that i can plot it for two i think i'll plot it for two a lot of the time i guess i'm not really i'm probably not casting it on two very often or i'm not casting it for three very often i think i am just going to plot that almost always i get these two humiliates I think I don't want to play all these Rootop Assassins, but I could, I could consider playing two. I get this. I get this crew. How many outlaws? Outlaw check. One, two. Not an outlaw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outlaws. Plus there's some mercenaries rolling around. That seems decent enough. Um, I can play this guy as another outlaw. Play this removal spell, of course. Now this is starting to get somewhere here. This is starting to get somewhere. My three drop spot is actually looking a little lackluster, so it's possible I would even consider playing um, this... Uh, one of these three twos. I can like put one in here just in case. And then in red, I think at least on the table should be Thunder Salvo, especially given that I'm trying to commit a bunch of crimes here for like Vadmir. Um, okay, I'm just curious how many cards this is. So let's do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23 on the nose. That is what we're going for is 23 playables with two bounce lands i could consider going down to 16 but i think because i'm splashing a color i probably want to stick with 17 um yeah this looks okay i mean i it's a bummer i couldn't play my jaces but i'm playing i mean i'm playing four rares i've got two vadmir's and two bruce tarles which is kind of weird but how the how the deck worked out and right i get to Strip my opponent's strongest cards with these two Humiliates, which I'm pretty excited about. A curve where I go, like, turn two Vadmir into turn three Humiliate sounds pretty strong. So something in this space, yeah, this does feel about right to me. Okay, so now that I've, like, got my colors figured out, what I do is I do one more pass through all my cards to see if there's anything that I'm missing. So these are both really strong red cards, but I can't really splash for them easily because of the, the red red is just so difficult. I, I could, you know, play some cards and make treasure or something, and that might help me out, but it's so hard. It's, like, this is also just a tough one to splash for. I mean, I love making all the extra 1-1s, one -ones, but... Uh, am I gonna have enough extra creatures lying around to sack to this? I don't think so. I'm not gonna splash for either of these cards. Don't think I want just this make a mercenary thing. I don't think I want this shrink, although I could sideboard it in if they've got a bunch of stuff. Still no equipment for Stoneforge Mystic. Womp womp. Don't want this high noon. Don't think I want anything here. This fixes my mana and can draw me cards and it's a three drop, but I just don't have a lot to ramp into. I'm not like a rampy style deck. I mean, I'll put down the other Sterling Hound, I guess. Um... And I'm not going to splash for some of these creatures. Right? Right? When on your splash, you want to be able to, like... Um, <clears throat> on your splash, you want to be able to play your cards on time. So, um, right, the uh, three drop of this red, you're probably only going to play, like, a mountain or two in my deck. So, um, okay, so let's think about this here. So I think I counted, and this is 23. Um... So what I think about now is there's these five cards I could consider playing if I wanted to. Sterling Hound just have another three drop. Thunder Salvo as a removal spell, but it's off color. 
Rooftop Assassin. I, I have I have enough I have enough four drops. I probably won't, won't want to play that. This uh, is a trick that also gives me a treasure token, and the treasure helps fix for Bruce, so that's uh, a plus. Here's, here's another four drop. So I have a lot of fours already. Um, so is there anything here that I would cut? One, two, three. Is there anything here that I would cut for something? One of these guys. This gives me a treasure to fix my mana two, so I like it. I think I like all my twos. Maybe I could consider cutting an outlaw medic. I think that's probably the weak link here. So that's a maybe cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all my maybe cuts back up into my hand here, and then I can figure out of what I have, what I wanna what I wanna play. This take up the shield, I think, also is a maybe. Combat tricks are are decent. Um, I think I want both these humiliates. Combat tricks are, are, are decent, but um, you know you don't have to have to have them. I don't that I want all these rooftop rooftop assassins. I think I do end up needing this this muscle as a top end card though. And then on the lands, I think I'm going to play all four of these. Um, right, these, even though this one is mostly off color, the eroded canyon, just the fact it triggers the crimes. Playing Vadimir on turn two and then eroded canyon on turn three, or uh, one of these lands on turn three plus something else is going to be pretty pretty big game. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 34, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I had to play three of the cards that are in my hand right now. I'm doing good on my creature count. I've got these six spells down here. So now it's just a matter of like which of these three do I want to play. I think I want at least one more four, especially given that these are on a splash. So it's basically do I want to play a second rooftop assassin or the first Boneyard Desecrator. Yeah, I, th I think I want to play this Fake Your Own Death, so just, it helps fix my mana a little bit. It's a trick. I think I like it a little more than Take Up the Shield in this deck, although I think Take Up the Shield is a stronger card, just because the extra treasure token is going to be really helpful for helping cast Bruce. And with this and this treasure dredger, I do feel better about playing Thunder Salvo as a removal spell. So I think that's how I want to do it. I could see playing this Outlaw Medic. It combos well with the Rooftop Assassin. Um, but yeah, I think, I think this is how I would build it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 23 cards. Um, not, you know, this Sterling Hound is a little on the weak side. I could see playing like this Outlaw Medic instead. I don't really want another 4-drop. Um... And what I would do for my mana base is I think I would play one mountain, probably maybe zero mountains, honestly. Like I'm gonna play both these. I have these two red sources. This is two red sources. I have this as a third red source. I have um, this as a fourth red source. So that's four red sources um, for three cards. Do they want to play both these arid archways? I think that they are just historically so, so good. Um, they also let me like reset these for more crimes. So I think I, I think I will play one mountain. Because if I can play Bruce Tarl, Tarl on turn four, it's just so strong. So I think I'm going to play, yeah, one mountain, these five lands, and then what? I've got a white source here. Probably like seven swamps and six plains. No, I, maybe I don't play the mountain then. Yeah, maybe I just I, mean, I just can't do it. Like I th that mana base sounds. Yeah, I think I I go six plains. Because this counts as a plains, basically six plains, seven swamps, and then these lands. I could consider cutting the arid archways. I'm not curving up that high, but um, I resetting these for the extra crime triggers for the draws where I have Vadmir sounds nice. I know this is like my only crime card, but it's gonna be so snowbally when I get it rolling. I mean, this I have this too, I guess, but. Um, yeah, you can keep some keep some pretty sketchy hands when you've got arid archway in your in your opener. Um, so, so something like that is what I'd build. I could also you know put even more time into it, but I've already rebuilt this deck a bunch of times. So hopefully that gives you a, a good idea of kind of what I'm trying to do here and, and how I build a sealed deck. 
and uh, hopefully it's useful. Um, have fun out there at your pre-releases. Enjoy. Let me know what you build in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, remember, you got this.